is meant for an adult audience. Love, love, love line may contain sexually oriented content. Mm, listener discretion is advised. Love line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Hey everybody, it's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. Dr. Drew, board certified physician. Digs Benz <laughs> Hey, Angie Everhart is uh, doing here tonight. She is actually circling out there. Mm-hmm. And Anne saw her drive by looking for the radio station, but she didn't notice Ann. Well, that's yeah. 15 minutes ago. She'll, she'll be in. Yeah, she'll be in. She'll be in. She's uh, plugging the uh, Celebrity Mole. I've been seeing the uh, commercials all uh, over ABC for that. Angie, uh, I would consider a dear, dear, dear friend, even though we've never seen each other outside of this studio. Although... We did race together. I was going to say, yes. Celebrity that's right. Grand Prix last year, and yes. Now, was she up here promoting that? No, I don't think she was. We had a couple of, uh, we had Josh Brolin up here. It says here the last time she was up was <clears> a year and a half ago. I can't believe that. Seems seems too long. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, no, I, I think uh, Josh Brolin and I uh, can't remember who else came in here to promote that. Right. But uh, she was a, a game competitor. Thank Christ she didn't beat me in that race. That would have been good. And the only thing worse than getting beat by a chick is getting beat by a hot chick. <laughs> and this is how guys are, by the way. You know what I mean? Like, That's how they think. Well, it is true. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a, a guy. guy think, yeah. It's a guy. Like, if, if a woman was beat by a guy in something that a woman does well, yeah. like uh, the piano or cooking or yeah. something... It wouldn't matter what the guy looked like. Yeah. You, you see what I mean? Like, it didn't... Like, why if, is it? Think if about it. Bobby thinking, why, Riggs... Why is the look uh, so But important? just listen. If right. Bobby Riggs beat Billie Jean King in tennis, it makes no difference yeah. what Bobby Riggs looks like. That's right. Now, if Billie Jean King beats us in tennis, it's cool because she's got the butch haircut. Right, she's she a little bit like dikey. Angie. She looks like Angie. We kill ourselves. We why? masturbate. Why? Ma- no. Yes. First masturbate. Yes. You masturbate. Then kill ourselves. And why? Possibly with our own semen. semen. Yeah. You choke yeah. your semen. Yes. Why? Uh, Why is it so troublesome? I, be, I, I don't know because it, because it's it's very it's a very bitter pill, pill to swallow no. to have someone you want to f ah. beat you. And if they beat you, that possibility no more. Oh yeah, that's what that <laughs> that's is. Gone. That's, that's why you got to kill yourself. That's what that is. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. That is like no. Nope, that's the way it was closed. There's nothing I can do about it. No. Yeah, even though it's not open in the first place, the way men think, it's like well, right? Yeah, maybe you know. No zero. Zero yeah. possibility. That is a male thinking. Yeah, process. and we'll bring when, now when Angie does get in here, we'll ask her have the feminine mind. She's, she's got a little bit of a tomboy yeah, yeah. attitude, which is nice. She's uh, very uh, accessible and approachable, and uh, sort of game for a hot chick. But we'll ask her how does the feminine mind work? Like when she yeah, yeah. when we did that uh, we did that celebrity race. She came out there yeah. after she saw the guys that were a little better, a little yeah. more skilled. Did it make a difference in her mind? How she felt about them. How she felt yeah, about yeah. the guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just pissed. I, I, She's more pissed. No, I, beat them more. No, I suspect a woman is more attractive, especially when they see if they if there's the competency. Not not if they're in the competitive mode. Not if they want to beat them. No, but then they're pissed. No, they're not pissed. I will there's see. still, we'll there's see. still we'll a part of them that likes the competency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because right. here's the thing. Since women, they're visual to a certain degree, but if there's 10 guys in a room and they average out to be a good seven and a half or an eight, there's no reason to like one guy more than the other. One guy picks up a guitar and starts playing it beautifully. That's boom, the That's yeah. the guy. Yeah. Now, for guys, the one chick could pick up the guitar and start playing it. If there was one chick that was marginally hotter than her, Zero difference. We're still in the one that's marginally hotter. We're very, you know what? We we may be immature, lame, and, and it may be lame, and it and it and it may be very uh, superficial, so predictable. But we're very consistent yes. and very so, predictable so that predictable. way. So predictable. absolutely, yeah. And but but and even guys that choose to behave differently, you still know their motivational priorities. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You, you you can be more evolved and go that that's ridiculous. Why forget? It. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go with that. But right. the mind still goes that way. Right. All right. All right. You ready to... Yeah. Uh, Let's go. Yeah, yeah well, let me say this, too. I think women look at guys differently. Uh, well, see, men don't look at women differently. We just look at women. That's right. Well, no, when we're in an evolved state, we do, but there's still this primary thing going on. Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying a- a- Angie Everhart could see you yeah. and go... Oh, who cares? And then see you making your medical rounds in charge, telling people what to do, that kind of stuff. You know, uh, um, 
talking a bunch of me- medical mumbo jumbo about a bunch of carpal tunnel syndrome <laughs> and all these other syndromes. All of a sudden, she's ruined her panties. Right. She's seeing you doing that what is, you do. What, what do we used to call that in our numbers uh, evaluation? I don't the, know, uh, but but you, if you rank got, if position you, in life, if you have a woman position. who's interested in you, you have to let her see you in action. In action, mm-hmm. bossing people around. Firing people, beating up people, <laughs> saving people, either killing, either effing, killing or saving people. They get real turned on by that. They, they, need, a, they need action. I see. All right. All we right. just want to have them hold still. Right. All right. You ready? Yeah. Right, here we go. Anastasia? Uh-huh. You're 24? Yes. What's up? Okay. I have a question. Um, I started seeing some guy in... We've been seeing each other for about four to five months, give or take some weeks, I guess. And our personalities are very, very different first, you know, first off. He's really, really shy, quiet type of guy. Um, I guess we really put it to good use when people say opposites attract. Um, the sex is great, but he is a bit prudish. Mm, so, like, that? he's... I think he needs to, I need, I need to know, maybe you can give me some advice how I can get him to open up a bit more sexually. What, I'm very... You're going to have to be much more specific. What do you mean when you say prudish? Yeah, yeah. I'm, oh. I, I'm, I'm very... All right, too bad. Angie's here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's happening, leather pants? I just got into a car accident. Really? Oh. Right next door. Oh, my really? God. Are you okay? I'm fine, but the Porsche behind me is wasn't. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> right, where and you, or...? No, um... Wait, wait, you have a Porsche, right? No, I have a truck. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. (laughs) I guess it is now. Hi, guys. Hi. Hey. Sorry I'm late. I just ran over some poor guy's car. Was it a nice Porsche? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Uh What happened? Brand new. He he didn't even have his tags yet. Poor guy. He was like, I've waited my whole life to get (gasps) a Porsche, and I don't even have the plates yet. And I, I just looked at him, I'm like, I'm so sorry. I didn't see you because the car was so low oh behind my God. me. Mm. And, and what happened? I backed up. Oh. And it screwed up the hood or the yeah, bumper? Yeah, I just I scratched his hood and it oh, bent wow. yeah, his hood. I mean, it's not, wow. it'll be good. it's not like a... Yeah, that's a big boy. He's a big boy. He'll land on his feet. Was he excited that a hot chick did it? He, I think he was gay. Oh, so, so I think push. it might have been worse, but... <laughs> yeah, it might have been his hot mother. <laughs> he was like, I've waited my whole life. I've saved up forever to get this car. Oh. I'm like, I'm so, I'm so sorry. And he's like, yeah, I can't even be mad at you guys. You're too nice. Well, let me let me see. Uh, I'll tell you if it's gay. Was it the Boxster or was it the No, 9/11? it wasn't a Boxster. It was 911. Oh, straight, <laughs> straight. Oh, the straight. gays go with the Boxster. Uh, it's true, but I, I think that's... Yeah. A convertible? Yes. If he's listening. Oh, oh, then back to gay. <laughs> now we're back. You go back to gay once in a while. You try not to, but sometimes it just, it just Hi, comes Adam, full circle. Hi, Adam. I haven't seen you since the race. Oh, great seeing you. <laughs> Boy, do we have questions for you. You do? Yeah. First off, uh, we'll give uh, the plugs, the uh, celebrity mole, uh, Yucatan. Or Yucatan. Yeah, you can call it Yucatan? <laughs> you can Whatever. call it Yucatan if you want. Oh, you didn't like it. <laughs> Was it Yucatan? Well, it sounds the food exotic. Was really bad. Really? So you could call it Yucatan. Yucatan. <laughs> it sounds exotic and beautiful, though. It is beautiful. Yucatan is very, very, where very, Can- very hot. Cancun is. Yes, it is Cancun. Yeah, it's just the Yucatan Peninsula, is really. And, mm-hmm. uh, and now you were there doing the Celebrity Mole, and I've been seeing the commercials. We've been running the uh, hell out of the commercials uh, on all the uh, football oh, games and everything. Good. And, and uh, now, how many days are you there in total to film this thing? We were there for two weeks. That's it. What? I just like think Kathy made three hundred thousand dollars last year doing that. Oh, did she make three hundred yes, grand? Yeah. Oh, now you know who won, obviously, but you can't say anything. I know who won. Yes. All right. Uh, any anyone give you uh, fits because uh, the Baldwin boy was uh, driving Kathy Griffin nuts <laughs> last year. Well, Stephen stayed in character. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. But Corbin came back again, and he stayed in character. Yeah. Those are the two returnees, right? Corbin Burnson mm-hmm. and uh, Stephen yeah. Baldwin. Stephen, I wouldn't describe as staying in character. He's, well, meaning... He, stayed, he's just, he played himself. Well, Stephen is... You know when, when women have complaints about guys and yeah. how guys are? Yeah. That's uh, Stephen Baldwin. Right. Yeah, he's, he's everything <laughs> that women complain about, but yet go back to consistently.
<laughs> That's the great thing. And Corbin, uh, Corbin is, uh, I'm not, uh, you know, I, I think, and this is where I'd like my Corbin's career to go. Spaz. He's just uh, <laughs> riding the uh, celebrity circuit now. He's in all the, uh, the, the softball games and the celebrity this and the challenges and the judging. It just seems like a nice, uh, nice way to ride out the career. Like well, a- Corbin, I have to say, out of everybody that was playing this game, because you can either play it really hard or not, mm-hmm. and he played it. Mm-hmm. He played it Very really well. Hmm. Yeah. Now, is he, we were discussing before he came in is that as we're talking about the uh, celebrity uh, Toyota Grand Prix race, that <clears throat> getting beat by chick is bad, getting beat by <laughs> hot chick is, is ultra bad. <laughs> And we can, we can well, you take, didn't have to worry about that, Adam. <laughs> we, we, and I appreciate you not, not beating me. But uh, I, we can take being beaten by an unattractive. The, the, the more man like a woman, the more palatable the defeat is for the man. Right? Just, I, think, I really it. think it's just the less attracted you are. Yeah, but that's, sort of uh, but that's a universal thing. If the, if, the, if the woman is sort of more man than you are, it's easier for, her, for, for you to take is that is that defeat. in anything? Anything. That's right. We don't like hot chicks winning. But let me ask this, because we pose we pose the <laughs> no, question. No, we like the beating other guys. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's yeah. funny. Yeah. That's entertaining. <laughs> that's great. As long as it's not you. Right. We, okay. uh, we posed a question, or I posed a question to Drew uh, before you uh, came into the studio. As a woman, are you attracted to a guy when he seems competent, such as uh, behind the wheel of one of these race cars, like when we were doing the uh, celebrity race? Is there any? Is it a push? Is are you more attracted, less well, attracted? It, it, the question really was: when you're competing with these guys and you want to win. Mm-hmm. Now, with, for the guy, he was saying, it really it sort of closes a window if you're attracted to a woman who beats you into something you're competing with. It's just like, oh, I can. That's have. so insecure, Adam. No, no, I, I know, no. But, I but, but for women, <laughs> no, if no, you're no, competing no, with somebody, you want to beat them. How do you I feel wasn't about the guy? Saying that you jack off. <laughs> what you were saying. They were saying men Nobody, think that what way. Nobody. What do you mean we? Who? I. No. I said. Here's what I said. You, you do this race. There's there's ten guys that show up. Right. You don't know half of them. Right. They're all sort of semi attractive. Some better than uh, others. I'm be on the lower half of that. But then one of the guys really knows what he's doing when he gets into the car. Right. Does that change things for you? In a situation I think you, I, you know, like, like Jeremy. Like no. Jeremy was very good. Hold on. Drew, just shut up. Of course it, it changes it things sexy. in abstract. Yes, of course it I think it, it makes does. it well, sexy. But what if you wanted but to I beat him? If you were, and you really wanted to beat him? Who cares, you idiot? Does it make a difference? No, not no, to me. Okay, that's the question. I really wanted well, I to beat the, Jeremy, but there's no way I was going to. No way. Yeah. So, I mean, see, Jeremy McGrath, if you, you, you'd, you'd see Jeremy, you'd go, there's a dorky guy from Orange County. You wouldn't be interested in the guy at all. I mean, there's nothing wrong well, with him. But, you know, you're, you're a supermodel. You know, he's, he's, he's beneath you. But <laughs> then you see, him, you see him compete and excel, and all of a sudden, you're looking at him a different way. Well, because you respect him. Yeah, but You respect some... what he does. Yeah. And, you, and, and, well, you could, and nobody could beat him. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Well, he'll be in tomorrow night, though. We had a couple of hot laps on the training uh, track where I did uh, <laughs> did pretty good against him. He'll admit it. You did. Yes. yes. You did. I was so cheering for you up yes. on the, I, I was watching him, and he was he was beating. He actually beat him at one point. Yeah. We had, uh, there was a day when we were uh, doing the driving course mm-hmm. when it was driving rain mm-hmm. the entire time, and everyone was racing in this driving rain, and the cars were pitching sideways, and the windshield wipers Steve were Steve Hartman was and, driving clear across <clears> the grass, <throat> cutting yeah, through the, he, the track. Were, like bumper to bumper, <laughs> It was uh, it was really exciting. I mean, it's as exciting as it is to race in the driving rain. It adds a uh, extra extra element to it. But I'd uh, have to say that was one of the most uh, that was one of the best days. Like one of the best things you can do with your clothes hmm. on is race a car. <laughs> yeah. It was uh, true. You ought to do that. I'd like to. You got to get your publicist going on that. You should do that. It's so much fun. I bet. All right. Let's uh, talk about this lingerie bowl uh, very quickly, which I heard yeah. about. Uh, I've heard heard about some weeks back, <clears throat> and then it, then I thought it went away, but then it came back again. Am I am I right? This is a halftime pay per view uh, at the Super it's Bowl. L- lingerie Bowl 2004 is what it's called. It's right. pay per view halftime at the Super Bowl. So it's going to come on at the same time as the halftime at Super Bowl. Right. And it's seven girls against seven girls playing full contact, takedown, football. Well, what are you wearing? We're wearing lingerie. Oh, really? Uh, but well, we have pads, on our, we have shoulder pads, 
and they've changed it to hockey helmets now. Like they're they're Smart. sort of they're a little smaller than regular helmets because regular helmets would do too much damage to our skin. Sure, sure. And so, where do you, where do you play it? We're gonna do it at the Coliseum. At L.A. Coliseum. L.A. Coliseum. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Helps this world. <laughs> this is why uh, the Taliban wants to blow us up. By the this way, is it. the picture of objects <laughs> wearing hockey helmets, a pants. thong backs, shoulder no, pads. And no, no, they're hot pants. They're not thong backs. All right, all right. Go back. Hot pants and beating the crap out it's of each like, other while guys drink and We're watch. actually playing football. We really are. We are. We are out there every Tuesdays and Thursdays practicing, and the practices are so much fun. Really? Who? What our, the? We have NFL coaches and different different people who are... I was out there today with my quarterback coach because I don't want to go out there and do an athletic are, foul. Are you I'm playing quarterback? I'm, spir- I'm quarterback. Oh. So I, can, I have a pretty good spiral. Really? Yeah, I'm working hard on it. I'll tell you that uh, Angie really goes for it. <laughs> really, uh, see, I like that. And who's on your team? You have uh, other hot chicks on your team, and you're All playing hot chicks? All the girls are really... Pr- Actually, oh, there are yeah. no dogs on any of the no, teams. No, you can't. <laughs> it's a disgrace. It, they're really pretty girls. Great what, bodies. What's, really what, nice. what if you win? What do you get? Does the winner get anything? Well, I heard that Dodge pulled out. That right. We they we had we were going to win a truck, but right. there's a bonus involved. Yeah. And hopefully by Super Bowl time they'll have another sponsor. There yeah, that's what I've that heard. Kick something in. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Yep. Terrorists hate this activity. Nothing wrong with it though. This there's is really, if guys can play football. Why can't girls? Yeah. No, What's the I, problem? Well, it's like playing I, in your bathing suit. It's it's bigger than my bathing suit, actually. <laughs> this this uniform that I'm wearing is bigger than my bathing suit. All right, but you have a very small bathing suit. You got to be fair. I don't wear thongs. No, no you don't. No. You don't. No. No. Oh, okay. All right. Well, it's off, by the way. <laughs> I'm a thong man. I, I wear, wear thong. thong underwear. Well, yeah, but that's the thing is, I wear thong bathing suit, and I insist my ladies wear thong as well. <laughs> so. We'll have to. We'll we'll talk about that. It's not necessarily a deal breaker for us. <laughs> Anastasia, uh-huh. you're, uh huh. You're 24. Anastasia had a prom about a half hour ago, and then Angie came in. Yeah, the husband Hi, who's Angie. too. Hi. The husband is too shy, and you were going to tell us what you mean by that. Um. Like yeah, what won't what won't he do? Okay, he's well. He's blessed when it comes to being down there. But when it comes to the sexual department, all he does is just lay down, and I have to do all the work. And mm-hmm. it's like pulling teeth with him to get him to try something else. And if I bring up something else, he's like, well, I don't feel comfortable with that, or I'm not comfortable with that. And I need to know... Does, does he really... Like? Hold on, quiet down. Does he really say, I don't feel comfortable with that? Because I've never yes. known a guy to do that. Yes. That's strange. Is he a religious those are, those guy? Are, those are the words he uses? We're like bewildered by that. He he's. I suggested for for New Year's Eve that we do something wild. You know, let's try something. You know, like on the side of the road or do something like that. And he said no. He said, yeah, he did really, too much hassle really for him. Really not comfortable with doing trying stuff like that. Yeah, well, and trying things out in public. But when you, when you try to change positions, he says, "Oh, that's I'm not comfortable." Why don't you buy him porn? Or, or wait, <laughs> yeah. wait a minute. Wait, this guy may be a, porn. this may be a di- this guy may <laughs> be a diabolical like genius. It, or or he just says, "No, I don't want to do that." He'll that or he's just lazy, right? Yes. He's just lazy and doesn't want to please he, you, you, you. And he's getting off without yeah, you pleasing you. You already do. Right. Guy, guys have their sort of zone. And you're already exactly. doing what he likes best. And to get him out of that zone just spoils the whole experience for him. So he doesn't want to get out of that zone. That, that's what. That's my question. How can I get him out of the zone without having to make it seem no, like... You, no, you, you don't go in the zone. You've got to cut, you gotta cut you him cut off. You cut him off. You don't go in the zone. You say, hey, forget it. We're not doing anything tonight then. Uh, but here's the thing, too, is, is we will, as guys, once we get a consistent sexual partner, this would never happen with Angie, but <laughs> once guys get a consistent sexual partner, uh, not every guy, not Sting, that jack-off Sting, unless you just uh, sit on Oprah for five hours a day talking about how he bangs the bejesus out of his wife using tantric sex. I, hold on a second. Let me just go off, because I did see Sting and his, uh, his old lady Trudy on Oprah. I, I don't know what the hell happened, but it was during the vacation. I just flicked on the TV, and there he was. I find it very bizarre slash incredibly pompous to sort of sit there with your wife and go, yes, uh... I make love to her for seven or eight hours at a time. It's like, really? Who cares? Yeah. And isn't that kind of weird? You don't believe that he does that? I I don't know if he does it. 
I don't care if he does it. I find it sort of bizarre <laughs> that he would be it's on Oprah for him to broadcast that. explaining about what he does to his wife and the multiple yeah. orgasms and the multiple hours that he does it to her with. And and I know. And by the way, it it screws up the it screws the curve up for the regular guys. And it's these sort of BS tantric sex guys who screw up they put the bar too high and they get all those oprah chicks and then my wife sits around and goes sting when he's not writing songs about his wife he's making slow rhythmic love making movements on her that last five and you want to know why you can't have the talk radio on while you're getting a bj and it's like i that, i'm gonna kill sting do you know what somebody just told me recently that sting has nothing on him <laughs> Really? Yes. Who, who? Who told it? A celebrity? Um, a friend of mine. <laughs> I, all right. I, all I'm saying is, is nobody should know how long it takes you to come or how long you bang your wife. You yeah, know what it, I mean? It's, it's intrusive. Uh, yeah. If you're yes. into yoga, so be it. You're into Go, yoga. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Happy yeah, for and, you. And, and if you feel like bragging just a little bit and saying, uh, you know, since I started doing the uh, the uh, Pilates, it's improved my yeah, performance or we in got, the we, got, yeah. we get the picture. Or we got no problem. We spent a lot of time together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, Say whatever you fine. like. But I don't need to hear you about banging your wife for five hours. No, that's not right. Yeah, and then and then and then like I Have said, I heard I, does she want him talking about that? I, I don't know. Where's her dad? <laughs> her dad's sitting home yes. watching TV. Oh, yes. oh, great, he's banging the bejesus out of my daughter. Yes. Oh my god! Yeah, my little angel's getting uh, the the crap banged out of her oh. for six seven hours at a time. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, thanks, Come Dave. On. It's just such a jack-off move what is, to do. What does that mean, that he's just not ejaculating I, I, for seven hours and they're I, just I don't know yes, making love? That and, and that's what that means. And they're just. They're just together. In bed together. Mm -hmm. here, here's, just making love for yeah. seven hours. And if you had all the money and time in the world, most people here, would probably but do here's that. What I've, here's what I've decided. It sounds great. There, yeah. There's two types <laughs> of blowhard jack-off guys. There's the Joey I mean, Buttafuoco type who just is a blowhard jack-off kind of guy. And then there's the slide-under-the-radar yeah. sting type who does it in a very... Uh, Subversive way. These he are the same guys. Under. The reason yeah, we're so sensitive to, to my it woman for is because shut are, up. These are the same guys in the seventies would tell us about the man. Yeah, same guy. No. Oh yeah, the man Puss. is the man. Is oh, we we would deal it. with that growing up. So. Uh, shut up. Uh, they just ruin it for all other guys. By the way, they really do. Why can't you be like Sting? Sting's full of crap. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What the hell are we talking about? <laughs> Commercial breaks. Yeah, but I had something to say, and then Sting got me going. <laughs> okay, here's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yes, 90% of guys will slide into a path of least resistance yes. vibe when it comes to work, when it yes. comes to sex, when it comes to the relationship. We will we will navigate our way through a relationship yeah. in an easy way, and that will that will spill into the bedroom. But not, but with not sex, in the first six months yeah. of the relationship, but year number six, you start sliding into but, it. But not only sliding into their sort of comfort zone, their their lazy zone. There's a huge positive also. It's like that's just what they like. Yeah, that's, that's what I like. Yeah, so I like. I like to hold still. Yeah, she yeah. gets on top. I come in three minutes and then I watch some <laughs> sports center. Everything everything's good. I watch the uh, the lingerie bowl. And so it's like saying. Uh, uh, and then, and then when the woman says, well, how about you get up and do this and burn some calories? And I go, no, nah, not my thing. Not my, well, of course, yeah, it's not your thing. You're doing your thing. Yeah. And that ain't your thing because it involves a little sweat and maybe a and calf well, cramp. Well, women don't understand. They have all the goods. <laughs> yeah. All they got to say is, hey, fine, nothing then. They're fine. I'm, I'm tired. I don't right, want to do anything either. You, you treat it the same as if you tell them to get out and mow the lawn. Absolutely. And he says, not my thing. Yeah. And you say, oh, yeah, it is your thing. Yeah. It's your new thing. So if your wife wasn't giving you any and... Yeah, you know, and then she and and you'd so respond. you had to work for it. Yeah, you'd respond. You would respond, of course. Okay, yeah, that, so this is what, this is what happens. Oh, who cares? She's well, gone. there's her answer. She's that's right. Stop giving him what that, he wants. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right, don't make it easy for him to settle into that. Angie Everhart here tonight, celebrity mole, ABC, <laughs> Wednesday night. Boy, that's coming up fast. Wednesday night. All right, we'll take a uh, what time on Wednesday night? Eight o'clock. We got to figure that out. Get that written down here, Ann. Take a quick break. We'll be right back. Loveline will be right back. Loveline. Loveline. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Angie Everhart is here tonight. I think we'll uh, call our supermodel Angie Everhart. Actress, <laughs> race car driver, thrill seeker, stunt woman. An American, I might add. 
Wow. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Phone's buzzing away. Woo! Angie is uh, going to be on the uh, Celebrity Mole, which is uh, coming up on ABC uh, this Wednesday. And also, uh, Halftime at the uh, Lingerie Bowl going on at the uh, Can't believe we're Super Bowl. Close enough to the Super Bowl to be talking about it. It's sort of disturbing, distressing. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I know. I, I seem like I, I see, it seems like I spend three quarters of the year. Well, I guess I do waiting for football season to start. Yeah, and then when it's over, it's kind of weird. It's yeah. like, oh no, and and it's this weird thing where you're 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 approaching the pinnacle. This is the big game, but then also when this game ends, and it's over, it's disappointment. Yeah. I, I was am. disappointed in the Denver game the other night, though. Oh my God! I, they got handed their cookies. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the game was, uh, I don't it know, 31 3 in the first half or something. I mean, Denver just got uh, just oh. got destroyed. Other than that, though, uh, some good uh, good games going on, Green Bay, so on and so forth. Are you a Packer fan? Well, here's the thing I'm a Rams fan. Uh. People attack me. But you know what I like about sports guys? They're uh, smallish, white, antagonistic guys who use sports <laughs> as a vehicle to abuse verbally. Right. You know what I mean? So. So it's like they go, what's your team, Adam? And I go, the Rams. Oh, the Rams? What are you into the Rams for? They backstabbed you. They left for they left for St. Louis. And I go, well, uh, I grew up in L.A. I always liked the Rams coming from L.A. And I don't know what other team to root for. But they screwed you. You're an idiot. Hey, Jeff, guess what team Adam likes? No, no, backstabbing Rams. Oh, dude, what an idiot. You know, it's like... Uh, uh, I don't know. To me, it's an easy math thing. When I was uh, nine, I had a Rams beanie. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? I yeah. enjoyed watching the Rams. I can't help it. I like the Cleveland Browns. I'm from Ohio. There you go. Even though they disappoint us every year. but <laughs> Yeah, that's usually uh, how it goes. And by the way, the why it's uh, horribly frustrating to uh, watch any kind of sports in Los Angeles because I sit Except around. Except for lingerie bowl. Oh, no, that you can watch because <laughs> everyone's a fan. And uh, it, it's not broken up. Uh, it's not divided state by state. But hey, I sit around with a bunch of guys. They're, they're Patriot fans. They're Steelers fans. Everybody's from somewhere else. Uh, not one Los Angelino uh, yeah. amongst them. And even if there was, it wouldn't be a Rams fan. And now I'm considered an a-hole for liking the Rams. I, I don't, what's, who should I like? And then, they, then they make then the lame suggestions start. Yeah. You know, when I go, well, well I don't know. Then who's my Raiders? team? Oh, what about the Raiders? Yeah. And I go, well, they left L.A. too. Yeah. Well, then you got to go San Diego. It's like, well, well, listen, it's all fantasy, you retards. <laughs> you think the team knows? No, the team's like, counting on me. Like you didn't play for the Rams. Yeah, I, I know. So they they oh. talk as though they actually played it, for it's the team. Really, no, time. no, it really gets yeah. sad when they speak in terms of we and us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're uh, we're looking at a pretty good outing uh, this weekend. Uh uh, I think we can uh, we can we can handle Buffalo pretty good, and uh, you know us us as Pat, you know us. Oh, please! Oh my God! April. All right, so I'm a Rams fan. Hello. You're uh, you're 19. Yes. What's up? Well, I went to a party at my Second friend's call house tonight. one weekend, and shut um, up, Drew. Without me, you'd be nothing. And. Go ahead. And I got, like, really, really drunk, and I really don't remember much of it, but there was this guy there that I hated, and he's the same age as me, and at some point, me and him ended up in my friend's bathroom having sex, mm -hmm. and from what Thin I... Thin line imagine, between love and hate. Did he rape yeah. you? No. And from what my friend say is, no, apparently I went willingly with him, and apparently we went in and out, like, all night just doing it and I really don't like in, in and out you mean the bathroom, in and out the bathroom and back yeah, yeah. you're going you're, okay yeah and well, why do you are you sure you hate the guy and and well he's like he when I was when I met him and I wasn't you know drunk he was he was just an asshole to me and he, and he's like best friends with the next boyfriend of mine who's an ass and he's an asshole too so well, like, you seem to have you seem right. to be attracted to assholes, just like your boyfriend. <laughs> well, anyway. So his being an I, asshole doesn't mean you're not attracted to him. Yeah, and I woke right. up the next morning immediately when I found out what happened. I partially remember some of it, but not all of it. But I was like, oh my god! And now he hangs out with the same friends I do, and I know I'm gonna 
have to run into him at some point, and I'm not sure what to say. He has a girlfriend, and I don't... Oh, who cares? You like him. You like him, yeah. Of course you like him. If you didn't like him, you just shake it off and deny it. Yeah, you're into the guy. You don't know what to do because you want to keep going. Right. And, And look, don't get into that thing where... I didn't want anything to whatever, but I felt she she, she needed to know, or yes. I just felt like <laughs> no, that's such I don't a want her crap. To know. Good, you don't want her to know. Don't say anything. Yeah. Don't bring it up again. Don't talk to him about it. Don't talk to her about it. That's it. He'll be fine. Okay. You're, all right. Take a nice long uh, loofah bath. <laughs> all right. Bye. Bye. This is why I don't go take questions on this show. What do we got? Uh, uh, there's this guy I really hate, but he banged me for seven hours like Sting. <laughs> <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> Sitting around playing a sitar. It's driving me nuts, all this jack off. Oh, guess who made the uh, cover of Oprah magazine this year? Ooh. This uh, last Sting. month. No, Oprah. no, Oprah. Oh, Oprah. 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 Every single one. If I, every one. The idea that her legions of fans don't see anything wrong with her starting up a magazine, putting her name on it, and then putting her big fat puss on it. I wonder why she does that. Every single... Seriously, every I wonder why she does single, that. Every single episode, because is it, her, it, every it, single issue is her. It must sell more magazines. <laughs> who it must cares? be what people it's, want it's who horrible. buy that magazine. Oh. It's well, like I mean, it's it's it it could have articles and pictures of her in every magazine, but she's on the cover every magazine. There's got to be a reason for it. They they wouldn't do it if it didn't sell magazines, yeah. right? Would no, they? Well, look. Well, I mean, when I mean, look, even like, if I started a magazine, I wouldn't want to be on the cover of a magazine. It's, it's the most every ob- single it's, it's, issue. It's obnoxious, and it should be held against her, just like um, Lisa Gibbons. Remember her? With all I her think, pictures. Yeah, we went. Lisa had her uh, daytime talk show, and we went backstage, or I did her show once, did or something like times, that, or say, yeah. well, whatever. I don't remember anymore. But okay. there's about seven thousand pictures of Lisa. Lisa on a surfboard, a bunch of Samoan guys holding it overhead. Lisa and the kids. <laughs> Lisa and the hubby. Lisa and Bert Bacharach. Lisa, 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 Lisa. And I just said, "Hey, that's obnoxious." Like, well, what the hell's going on here? And Drew, Drew did that, you know, because Drew has to defend everyone. Drew's like, "Well, it probably was." and her doing. I mean, the producers probably did it. Yeah, I said, yeah, but if this was my show and they put 8,000 pictures of me up in the I'd back, I'd tell them, guys, take them down and put up a painting or something, would you? That's obnoxious. So People I. are going to think I'm an a-hole. And the same with the magazine. Oprah should get her big fat puss off of that thing. Are there other magazines that... Like, that's like saying, though... Forbes! No, but it's no. like no, it's like saying uh, you know, car and driver. There's a car on every mag. You know, you know what I mean? No, you know, that's not the same. The, the cars you, don't have like? egos. But what it is kind of the same. Of retardism. No, be, the point is, you can no. make the you're same. You're an idiot. Thing. That's no, not your because, place. What happened to you? Because <laughs> what it's, happened? A, it's, it's not about Oprah, but it's Oprah's magazine. Identifies her as her magazine. It doesn't have to put a picture of her on the uh, cover. Of it has it has her name on the cover, so she can have. Whoever she wants, a guest appearance. Let's just put it this way. She's come out with something like 60-something issues in the, in the magazine's existence. And she's 63 for 63 on covers. Uh, you want to know who's going to be on next month in the uh, 7,000 months after that? Oprah, Oprah, and more Oprah. It, 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 I, would something, I would hold this against the guy I liked. Yeah, yeah, I understand. All I understand. right, and I wish her fans would. Just play devil's advocate. Yeah, well, of course there's a picture of a car in a car magazine. All right. (laughs) Well, there might be a truck next month. Christy, 15. Christy. (laughs) Don't think about it too much. All right, I'm getting angry now. (laughs) Christy? Yeah? You're 15? Yes. What's up? Well, see, like, I've been going out with this guy for just about a year and a half next month. And we've been having sex since, um, I think it was last summer in June. And he's brought up the issue of of anal sex and mm-hmm. he's never done it and I've never done it but I've heard mm-hmm. it was really painful so so of course you'd be interested in trying that I don't know because I'm always up for new things but even really painful things yeah uh well to be honest um I just pierced my lip like two hours ago and it didn't hurt so I guess I could handle pain yeah you sound oh. Sounds Str- yeah. trauma, Pier- trauma impulses. Yeah, I mean, look, you could slam your hand in a taxi cab door and be okay. And be okay doesn't doesn't mean you want to go out and do it, though, right? Exactly. <laughs> it's just like my friend had um, had sex with her boyfriend, and they tried it with lube, and she was in tears. Uh huh. Yeah. So why do you want to try this? That's well, if it hurts, don't do it. Right. Sting no. can do it for four hours, though. <laughs> with no lube. With no lube. With no lube. Just tantric willfully, lube. Willfully, yeah, tantric Willful lube. lube. <laughs> his, his dork has an aura around it that acts as a water-soluble lube. 
That sounds like a sitar. If you put your if you put your ear against uh, Sting's dork. Sounds like sitar music. Jack off. All right, hey, uh, Christy. You're 15. Relax. Come right. on. This is ridiculous. You have your whole life to try stuff like that. Hey, Adam, I had a colonoscopy yeah. last week. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. How'd that go, Drew? Lube? Lube? <laughs> Lube and pain meds and sedation. And, uh, Whoa. And, uh, right. Mm. And a wooden spoon to bite on, right? No, I was out. You're out? Yeah. Out. Really out. God knows what they did to you, Drew. God That's the time you, you ain't only rape your patient. Because it's like, hey, my ass is hurting. <laughs> yeah, well, no kidding. That's the time you make your move. See, when you go to the dentist's office and the patient wakes up, it's like, I thought I had a root canal, but my ass is killing me. <laughs> then it's like, that's a red flag. You get the uh, anal probe. That's where the guy gets Don't in a quick, quick wait, anal wait, raping. Why did you, were, you were going in for a checkup? For Yeah, I've got a lot of colon cancer in my family. So they found something. They found a polyp. So. Really? Mm -hmm. Good thing they did it. Yeah. Drew was happy about that. Mm -hmm. And what do they do well, with that they, they, take, they burn them out. They take them out. Right so that that is what causes the cancer. And those turn into cancers. Oh wow! When, so when are they? Uh, when's the polyp burning? They did it when they're in there. Oh that's really? So that that's that's, that's my thing. You're getting yeah. up there. Yeah. So you should go in for a checkup You're too. Up my, there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> haven't you had the checkup? No, he won't I, listen I, to I, anything. No, he's, I've just he's had, I've had finger. No, I'm gonna. I'm my gonna father get, had colon cancer. They didn't get it soon enough. I mean, he he survived it, but how horrible! There's no reason to have colon cancer today. Colonoscopy every five years will prevent. Essentially, all colon cancers. Now I'm going to get that's that. A, it's a common cancer. I'm going to give that. Do they film it? You can get pictures, yeah. I'm going to get the pictures. I'm going to send them to you, Angie. <laughs> I'll sign them. He's got a lovely okay. colon. A lovely colon. <laughs> a fantastic colon. The house tour would be amazing. <laughs> I got a model. My colon used to do runway work. <laughs> Actually, uh, New York and uh, Milan. <laughs> she used to do a lot of, lot of runway work. Very hot over there. Then it got strung out on cocaine. It got in with the wrong crowd. The it, it, it's yeah. ugly. It's very ugly. <laughs> it's be gross. Became the mistress of this uh, rich Arab guy. It, 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 it was sad. It was sad at the end. But uh, really, but that's why you got to go check it out. It's, had it's, had a little, it's been a little more it's, it's road been worn. Yeah, been around the block. Needs a little checkup. All right. Yeah. Get that colonoscopy. And again, with the instructions of uh, you find anything, take, take care, care of it. It's like Actually, when the car's up on the rack. Go ahead and do the work. I was doing some work, and Katie Couric's people were sort of encouraging me. They, you know, they, they're big in these cancer preventative because her husband died of colon cancer in his 40s. Ooh. And I thought, well, they eh, say that 40, you're supposed to have a checkup at 40 for men, right? Well, 50 is when you're really supposed to start, unless you have a lot of family history. And then it's 45 or 40, even, yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. All right. Go. I'll go get that, Drew. All right. And listen, uh, I like you know I like being put under anyway, so I look yeah, forward to any excuse. procedure. An excuse for Demerol and Versed for you. It's and great. what's it feel like when you wake up? You're kind of confused. You're kind of zonked. You don't know. out of it for a while. No. I, I slept the rest of the day, basically. Oh, really? But again, again, as a doctor, if you're going to anally rape your patient while they're under, <laughs> that's the time. That's, that's, when your I make, that's when I make my move. That's when you make your yeah. move. Yeah. <laughs> what are they going to do? <laughs> All right. Angie Everhart's here. Celebrity Mole uh, in the uh, Yucatan is coming up this Wednesday on uh, ABC. Oh, we'll yeah. take a uh, quick break. We'll be right back. 1-800-LOVE-191. We'll be right back. Hey, yo, it's Loveline. <laughs> Come on, Loveline. Yeah. <laughs> Angie Everhart. Happy birthday. It's here tonight. Yes, sir. I see. Angie, <laughs> Angie's got a... Uh, Young sister, younger sister named uh, Amber. Whoa! Is that what it says? Yeah, I'm just looking at it. That's just a perfect name for her. I bet she's hot. Amber. Yeah, she got that amber colored hair like you. She's got jet black hair. Oh really? Yes. Does she color it? Yes. Oh okay. She well, used to be go. blonde. Now she's got jet black. Yeah. What, is she she a model too? No. No. Yeah. What's she do? She does something. Um, I don't. Think she has a job at the Good. moment. <laughs> That's a turn on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Her guy. All right. Uh, yeah. We don't care. That's, a, that's always nice. Like less going. Like uh, when you hear that they're doing a whole bunch of stuff. So it's like, yeah, yeah, big deal. She's uh, she's a scientist. Uh, she's a martial arts instructor, and 
Um, she's a composer. Guys, guys, are like, guys do not oh, like challenges. Yeah, it's no good. Like We're just have her sitting home uh, ordering pink dot <laughs> and smoking weed. Are you serious? Yeah, we like that. Listen, we're, we're talking You've about got to be guy, kidding guy, me. Male motivational priorities. If so, we, like, if we don't work to overcome them because they, I'm because I'm busy. I'm I'm unattractive to you. No, I think I think guys think oh meets lots of guys. Ugh. <laughs> yeah, no, too it's, it's not that you, you're yeah. attractive to. Uh, here's the thing: if you stayed home, uh, ate pizza, and watched The Price Is Right. And uh, eight pot brownies, uh, you would be marginally less attractive than if you were out doing these uh, lingerie bowls and celebrity moles and race car driving right. and all that kind of stuff. As you, to if you're, you're male, you're more attractive out doing everything you're right. doing now. But it sounds like we can't get you now. You see, that's she's, our guy's thing. Yeah, she's hanging out with Corbin Bernstein. Yeah, <laughs> Bernstein, now whatever. switch it around. The guy, the guy version of this, the guy who's racing as opposed to the guy who's sitting eating pizza, much more attractive. Thousand million times. So it's a vast yeah. difference. No, so I should just leave the show now and go home and, and have pizza. Order pizza. Yeah, we'll I'm be, doomed. We'll be around. I'm doomed to be single forever. Is that we'll what it is? Coming around. <laughs> yeah. What is it? What, are you single? I am. What? Uh, what's up? You too. You, you set your goals too too high. Just find a nice regular guy. You you, you want to show busy guy? I think I guy. actually found a, sh- a regular. Oh, guy. Oh really? Yeah. What's he do? Yeah, he's like a producer or something, no? though, right? Just a regular guy? Regular guy. Regular job? Yeah. It's much better. Here, here's what... Uh, let me explain what you women should do. And I think a lot of, I think a lot of you, you do. Is you go out and you have your kicks. Mm-hmm. You, you, you're, you're model. You travel. You're with exciting guys. You're, uh, you roll around with Sting for 17 hours. <laughs> roll around with Charlie Sheen. Mm-hmm. You have a good time. You do the Hollywood scene. Mm-hmm. And then you start getting into your mid-30s. You start to calm down a little. you got the biological clock ticking. And you realize you don't need some guys uh, banging your best friend, calling, uh, no, calling in escorts not. and doing a mound of coke. And you just want some stable guy. You don't want some guy. You don't want to be a bricklayer. But you find some guys like a dentist and you settle in. You've had your fun. He's a couple years older than you. I just been holding out good for life. love. Yeah. You know, I wasn't going to settle for anything else, so that's what I'm holding out for. Yeah, me too. I mean, <laughs> I'm in love with the notion of being in love. Drew knows that. <laughs> it's you know what I'm saying? You've always said that. That's right. You have All a great right. wife, Adam. Yeah. She's great. Yeah, Angie and uh, my wife uh, at the uh, banquet uh, after the uh, race, they sat down and uh, they just uh, were thick as thieves. Yeah, a few <laughs> boozes, they both have a strong love of Van Halen, and yes. they just had a little white trash off. <laughs> uh, I got loaded and I made my way to another table. <laughs> no one plays the air guitar like my wife. <laughs> All right, let's do a little, uh, you want to do a Germany or Florida drill? Yeah, let's do it. All right. <clears throat> Charlie? Hi. Yes, you're 14. It's time to play Germany or Florida. Okay. A man was put on trial for attempted murder. When his girlfriend caught him cheating, she moved in with her 17-year-old daughter. Apparently, he didn't take rejection well. He told the police after the fact that he stole the radioactive material to test the plant's security. Yes, he stole radioactive material from a power plant that he worked at, hired a private eye to find her apartment, broke in, and contaminated her food and sleeping quarters, on, a, and then... On a routine medical checkup, doctors said she had 10 times the amount of radiation considered healthy. She literally mm. glowed in the dark. Now she has she, to live... Hold on a second. She didn't glow in the Wait, dark. First of all, yeah, that's Gilligan's Island. <laughs> yeah. Where literally. they glow in the dark after... Okay. Okay. Secondly, there is no such thing as a routine medical workup on this planet that would include a Geiger routine counter. medical... <laughs> There's no such thing. There's no such thing as a routine medical checkup that would detect radiation. But true, if a patient came in literally glowing, glowing, you might think of radiation. Like one of those sticks you snap. Only if she started like growing like an insect antenna, okay. growing to proportionate size, giant right, the, sizes. The, all right, this is this this story's got a few gaping holes yes, in it. Yes. But is it Germany? Or is it Florida? The, the, the mother moving in with a 17-year-old daughter screams Florida. Yeah, mm-hmm. but the power plant and the contamination from the power plant does have a sort of German feel to it. Because they don't have nuclear power really in Florida, do they? Oh, I don't know. But that you, would be Texas. <laughs> well, well, I, I think we're going Germany on this. Uh, right, we go I'll Germany? Go I'll go with you. We go Germany, Charlie. Yep, you guys are right. Germany's mm-hmm. right. Thank yep. you. Thank you Literally. very much. Thank you and Mahala. Literally, and the literally, by the way, needs we need to we need to uh, reel that in just a little bit. Like where the guy goes, 
I, 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 I jumped out. I literally jumped out of my skin. Literally. Literally jumped out of my skin. Uh, no, no, no. You can't use the hyperbole with the literally in yeah, front of it. No. Just glowing. No, yeah. literally glowing. Literally, you could just say glowing, no. but not literally. Glowing. Yeah, I understand. After I ate some three-alarm chili, my ass was literally on fire. Literally. <laughs> Torch, flame. Literally. No, Actually. Not. Genuinely. It ruined truly. The literally for the yeah. people who need to use the literally. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can't literally. Yeah, you don't. You, there's no such thing as a routine medical workup ever <laughs> on the earth. You don't, that would no. include a radiation check, oh, a Geiger you're just counter. Jealous because you don't Never do happened. that for your patients. Never Drew. happened. You're not just, in a million. Someone's years. jealous. All right, who do we want to talk to? Nick engaged a 24 year old woman. I want to take a 17? break. 17. Oh, you uh, want to take a break? Yeah. But I can't take a break because there's people that need help. <laughs> Nick. Yeah. What's up? You're 17. Yeah. Oh. Mm hmm. You're engaged to a 24 year old woman? Yeah, she's almost 25. Okay. And what's the question? Well, um, well there's a dilemma because, you know, we've, we're wanting to get married and my mother doesn't approve of it. So it's going to create a lot of tension between us and my mother and our fa her family and my family and so on and so forth. And I'm just trying to figure out how I can just get her to accept it. What kind of things is she disturbed about with this woman? My age and her age, she thinks... Well, it's seven years. All right, what else? She thinks it's a codependent relationship due to oh, that. No, no doubt it is, but what else? Anything else going on? She's just entirely against it. This, Not, is, this is your mother. Nothing else about this woman would upset this the, your mom. Say what? She's, she's otherwise a perfectly uh, suitable candidate for marriage. This well, she's years. got four kids also. Thank you. Ah. Thank you. Oh, by the way. Oh, by the way. <laughs> wow. You don't well, even. You don't even actually, oh, if, you, if you get married, make it five. Yeah, yes. yeah. Seven. You're, you you also. Nick will be the fifth. But Nick, you don't even know what that means to take care of four kids. Please, come on. You, but you're don't seventeen. Even Why are you in such a rush to get married? Um, well, due to the fact that I live my life a little bit too early. Um, well, uh, hold yeah. on, hold on, hold on. Because I live my life a quarter mile at a time, like Vin Diesel did in The Fast and the Furious. Yeah, by your own rules. And I play by my own rules. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, but you're still 17. Yeah. Uh, I grew up fast, too, but I'm not married either. <laughs> let's take a... Uh, well, she's, she's waiting for true love. <laughs> yes. She's in love uh, with we I'm take waiting a, for we gotta, the we gotta, idea a, of love. <laughs> I'm in love with the notion of being in love. And, and sting. We got to take a quick break. Angie Everhart here. We'll get back with Nick. We'll talk him out of this after this. Here it is. Bottom line, it sucks being single today. Tons of lame people and no decent prospects. Call the Dateline. Call the Dateline. Call the Dateline. 1-877-889-DATE. Loveline! Loveline will be right back. So get your problems ready. Ready. <laughs> oh, can't get enough of those eagles. Boy, do they suck. They're, uh, they're in the top of my uh, don't need to hear another song from this band ever again uh, list. The eagles? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Except for that witchy woman. Oh, that's sketchy. Yeah. You guys who are listening to the show, Angie Everhart is here, uh, by the way, talking about the Celebrity Mole ABC Wednesday nights. Angie's old enough to remember, so is Drew, that uh, there used to, rock groups used to write songs about devil women and witchy women and women being like cats. Yeah, women that cast and spells on you. Gypsy mm -hmm. women. Yeah, women that cast spells on you. Yeah. <laughs> and spooky women. And Gypsy cat women. Yeah. yeah. Evil. Brown-eyed women. Evil. Evil. Yeah. Evil. <laughs> evil women. You're women talking about evil spells. women. Yeah. yeah. You're yeah. saying I'm an evil but woman. But then the men were all <laughs> rambling man, so yeah, they, they well, couldn't help themselves. Like, what are you going to do? You have to ramble if the Sorry. woman's going to be a devil woman. Of course. Of course. Yeah. What are you going to do? Yeah, they... <laughs> What is the definition of a devil woman? She's got the cat's eyes. She's got the nine lives. She, she draws you in with her beauty. She's not some uh, fat chick with bad skin. She's, she's, she's beautiful. She, she brings you in. She seduces you. She, she, draw, she, she brings you into her web. And then the devil woman comes out. Not quite sure what she does at that point. But that's why I'm a rambling guy. Right. I have to ramble. have to. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, it would make sense. And by the way, the guys who rambled, they rambled from good women. It would make more sense if they rambled 
from the Devil Woman. Right. Like if they combine the two song genres, like I'm sorry, I got to ramble because you're a Devil Woman. <laughs> but instead, it's like I got to ramble and you're great, which sends a very bad message to the young girls listening. Yeah. Indeed. Mm-hmm. I'm with you. I'm a whiskey drinking, rambling man, but it's okay because you're a Devil Woman, so I got to ramble. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to Nick. Yeah. And here's the thing about the 70s, too. Once you got the label of being a rambling man, there's nothing you could do. What you gonna, it, it, I love you. I love the home. I love your bed. I love your car. Here's my problem. I'm, I'm that guy. Rambling man. That's me. I'm a rambler. <laughs> got to ramble. <laughs> Don't want to. Have to. Maybe you know next what? time. Maybe next time when I'm in town again. I'll come by and see you, but that I'm rambling around. And you know that, well, that I hope I find a that, rambling man. That dad yeah. of you, that, 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 <laughs> I'm a rambler. Pop, pop, ramble. I Pops ramble who from abandoned, myself, ignored you, or at least somebody who can play it. Pop to neglected you. Mm-hmm. It's okay because he was Rolling Stone. He was Rolling Stone. He, he had to do that. He, he was a rambler. To, he, that's why he neglected him. Precursor and, and, to the yeah. rambling man was the Rolling Stone. That's right. Yeah, he had to ramble. He had to roll. That's all right. That's the kind of guy he was. Back to Nick. All right. More likely, they're abusive, alcoholic pedophiles. But it's not not as glamorous to sing about that. And have you ever tried to rhyme anything with pedophile? <laughs> well, not with abusive, alcoholic pedophile. No, I can't say I have. Nick, yeah, better just call yourself a rambling guy. <laughs> Code for that. Nick? What's up? All right, Nick, so she yeah. has four kids. Uh, is she an alcoholic All right, do, do a real recap here, Drew. Yeah, Nick uh, is a 17-year-old. Nick should to, learn to ramble, by the way. He may become one. Uh, who wants to marry a 24-year-old with four children? And mom's upset, and we're saying, hey, Nick, what's the hurry, A? B, she, your girlfriend's got to have a hellacious history and is looking just for a life preserver now. For whatever reason, you're the kind of person that needs to rescue someone in in distress, mm-hmm. the damsel in distress. Mm-hmm. Why do you need to do that? I don't see it as that way. Um, before I met her, she didn't want to be with another guy, and we met, and yeah. it happened. It- well, she didn't want to be with another man, but she was all right with being with a teenager. Right. Because uh, her last guy was an a-hole. And beat the crap Are out her, of her. Sure. four children from the same man? No. Two different mm-hmm. guys. Five guys. And the last no. guy wasn't sort of an abusive a-hole? Um, the first one was. The second one, she really couldn't get along with. Um, she was married to him. And... Uh, Hmm. She left him. I mean, she can get along with right. him outside the state. Let me, uh, let, me, uh, let me defend young Nick for just one second. Um, yeah. Once in a while, make a case for him. Once in a while, you get these old soul guys. Not at, seven, not at 17, not with four kids involved. Okay. Yeah, it, it's really, it, it's actually, it's, 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 it is negligent for the a, a guy yeah. to step in in a stepfather role when he is not mature enough himself. Right. <laughs> I mean, you, you're uh, four Do years away from buying a six-pack. Do you really think that you were mature pack. at 17? Oh, my God. Say what? Us? Yes. Us? Were oh, you, oh you, my God. You two. Were you... No. Listen, no. I was beating Adam's off to a rap now. box when I was 17. <laughs> no. We were, 20, we, weren't, we were barely there at 30. Yeah. Yeah. But you don't know that. You don't know. 17, you think you got it all together. Right. Okay. So his intentions are good. Well, of except- course, but he, he wants to rescue her. And they, that's what you're doing. You've all, you're making rationalizations about why she doesn't get along with these abusive, abandoning a-holes. And it's, uh, she wasn't looking for a relationship, but then it just happened. Things don't just happen. They all happen right. because of something. Well, let's just say you don't have to break up with her, but you shouldn't marry her. And what is his agree question, with your mother. by the way? He yeah. wants to know what to do about his mom. mom yeah. And by the way, yeah, look, Nick's going to do what Nick wants to do, and I'm yeah. sure Nick's mom has uh, been disappointed before. Well, your mom's just worried. She doesn't want again. you to get married at 17. She wants you to go out and have fun and be a kid and yeah. you know, do yeah. things that life, other 17-year-olds are doing. Life can be concluded at that point. He'll be the responsible for five lives, and the unfortunate Nick's girlfriend is going to be a handful. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, no, she's a mess. No, she's a mess. Yeah. I guarantee it. Yeah. And, and yes, Drew and I were talking on the way to the bathroom about this, by the way, when uh, he was saying that uh, she was looking for a life saver. By the way, why do you guys go to the bathroom together? So That's a little talk, strange. So we, we can watch. <laughs> we're not actually the same toilet, not the same latrine. Okay, because that, that was a little strange to me. You left me sitting here and you're like, dude, let's, let's go to the bathroom. I'll no, think. he said, let's go pee. Let's go pee. Yeah, that's the time we talk. Okay. That's when we we talk. don't talk enough on the air. We oh. need to talk. That's when we really, we really get to talk on. I found on. that a little bizarro. Yeah. She can come with us next time. <laughs> yeah, you go with us. Number one. I mean, we don't know with a girl. You really don't. You really have to take their word for it. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, if you were, in your case... It would that be is the of... thing. That's the two. It's like, if you walk in on a woman 
who's uh, going to the bathroom, you almost always assume number one, right? Mm -hmm. Don't you? Because they yes. don't do the other one. Yeah, they don't do the other one. But if you walk in on a guy sitting down, well, there's no math to be done. They let, they let he, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but he's, he's taking a crap. It, mu it must be nice. But, but, even, but even if you, there a, were a question... You, they, I, I know, know this is simple math that yes. others have worked yes. out before That's me. That's definitely but a quick retreat. Is, is, a, is a guy does suck. I mean, is, is a guy... Like, I took a crap at work today. Tell me all about it. Okay. <laughs> I was over at the Kimmel show, and I uh, took a... By the way, women the love the, the crap and fart talk. They uh, love that. Angie's completely turned on by this right Did now. you see me turn my head? Yeah, she was like, okay. oh, my uh, God. Listen, and I'm not proud of it, but uh, once in a while, you got you to gotta lay a little cable at work. It happens. It happens. You miss... You know what? My timing Chris is off. Chris likes it. Chris is into it. My timing <laughs> is off, Chris, because of the vacation. See, uh, yeah, normally, yeah, yeah, see, yeah. I, I look at crapping at work as poor form. Yeah, yeah. You know, now look, if you're working 14 hours, what are you going to do? Yeah. But if you're only there, and I'm only there about five, six hours a day, uh, I can make it, I can time it. You know what I mean? Everyone should get their timing. Drink your cup of coffee, take your dump at home before you leave, get in your car, go to work, and then when you come home, you take your dump at night, if, uh, if, that's, if that's your rhythm. Uh, I got caught off guard because I was on, uh, I was on vacation time. Mm -hmm. My colon was uh, on a completely different time zone. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it was uh, 4 o'clock. It needs to, to be checked, crap. by the way. We gotta, we're going to put some, some cable up there, right, Drew? Mm -hmm. with, a, with a camera on it? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I had to take crap, but it's a bathroom that services like an uh, entire floor. There's yeah. 80 people that yeah. are going to roll through there, so you want to do your work fast. Yeah. It, as a woman, you just plop down there because no one knows what you're doing. Right. They just assume it's number one. Right. I yeah. think women would prefer, I prefer to do it at home. Yeah, I, I know, but I, I'm saying work, it's not a if you are in public, you don't get the judgment that I get. That they, they they walk in, they see they see my shoes and pants around my ankles. They know what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Well, because we have stalls and doors. Oh, and you have dignity. You get dignity. <laughs> All right, we going here, Drew? Yeah. Line uh, line six. Bill. Hello. You're 22. Yeah. Yeah, I already don't believe Bill. No, I don't either. I have no idea what his <laughs> yeah. question is. See, that's how you tell a bogus call. Just don't believe him. Yeah. No, ahead, no, Bill. no. Hey. Hey. Okay. Uh, my, now he's going to try to convince us. Go ahead. Okay, my question is, um, my, my penis smells, and I shower regularly. Oh. Sometimes in between showers, I'll even rinse it, you know, with water. Yep. And, yep. and it still smells, you know. Yeah, now it's I believe you. A, it, it's kind of embarrassing. Yeah, well, it's probably not your penis. It's probably your sack that smells. No, no, because sometimes when I'm jerking off, like, you know, I could smell it. Not my nut sack. How can you tell the difference? <laughs> How close <laughs> is your nose to the different parts of your genitalia? <laughs> yeah, no. well, what, 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 what state are your balls in, Arizona? <laughs> <laughs> well, your, your, your nut sack is uh, two millimeters away from your penis. What do you thought? I, oh, I know the difference. <laughs> no, well, you know... You know I'll, 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 I'll catch it with my hand. Uh, Are you uncircumcised, Bogus? Now, now it's Bogus. Yeah, I know. The ability to ask you is uncircumcised. Just curious. <sighs> uh, uncircumcised or circumcised? Uncircumcised. Okay. Well, there's there's a lot of bacteria that can grow in those uh, dark and uh, yeah, those are crevices. And uh, you got to get that all cleaned out regularly and dry. Dry as a bone. What, what can I use to rinse with? It's like you having mean? half a vagina. In a way. Being uncircumcised. Yeah. There's a little maintenance involved yeah. down there. It's like a lady's got a little maintenance involved, uncircumcised, a little maintenance involved. Mm -hmm. what, what do you mean, what can you... This is why this is... Yeah, what, what do you mean? What lantern oh. oil? <laughs> what, what, do you, what do you mean, you dork? You use soap. Well, I, I shower with soap. Come on, I don't just run through the water. And then, and then do you make it... You take a, like a hair dryer and, and dry it all out so it's completely dry afterwards? Oh, you know, you'd have to beat off no, if you had, took a hair dryer. That's what you do. <laughs> a handheld hair dryer until it's completely dry. It dry. The mo here's the thing, yes. The use, moisture allows the bacteria use, to grow in the clothes Use a little off. liquid soap on there and then uh, pull that foreskin back and dry it off. Yeah. Try some Dove soap. A little Dove. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe yeah. antibacterial soaps too. Yeah, yeah, dry. Yeah, the mo moisture. That's what'll. It's that's the moisture what'll get you. and the lack of oxygen. Those are the things that that make it smell. I got a buddy who's got one of those uh, blowers in his bathroom. You know, just like you'd have at the really? airport. Yeah, it's not that big what? a deal. That's strange. That's his weird. It's easy to do. I, I'm sure it is, but it's such an interesting impulse to put yeah, one there, the industrial a, uh, blower in your. Mentor. I got I got some urinals in uh, one of my homes. No, that's true. You got it in your garage. 
Ooh, that's yeah, good. Yeah, I do. Here, here's the point. There's a handful of things out there that you only think are for the uh, airport bathroom. Yeah. You can have them at your house. And they're you, good. You can get on the internet. They have a catalog, 225 bucks. You get one of these things. You bolt on a wall, a little 110 or 220. I don't know what you run to. And next thing you know, <laughs> put it up high. It's blowing on your head. Mm-hmm. Uh, dig that. Getting out of the shower. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that, you know what that is? Hmm. That's somebody who grew up in New England or, or like Minnesota. Wrong and because, wrong. No, because that's where they learn that. They can't go outside without, yeah. without standing on one of those well, things. Well, no, you're exactly right, except for you just have to replace New England with Tarzana. <laughs> <laughs> uh, didn't, go, didn't go to school in New England? No, he's just a smart guy who likes, likes his stuff. I has to have lived in somewhere no. cold. Zero. Jack? Hey. You're 15? Yeah, I'm 15. I have a question about um, crystal meth and, and sex drive. Mm-hmm. If you use crystal meth like two, three times a day, and then hold on, isn't it speed? Isn't yeah, it supposed to be speed? speed. Why, why does it sound like you've been uh, snorting quaaludes? He's doing something else, also. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's kind of a mix, but it's mostly he's doing. You're doing clonopin or Valium or something. No, well, I, I, I like whatever. A, yeah, he's doing a bunch of stuff. Oh, right? okay, because he doesn't sound sped up. No. Now go ahead, Jack. Yeah, I'm not right now, but... Um, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, it doesn't matter if I'm jacking off or it's with a girl. It's just like, it, it totally, it's totally gone. Sex drive is gone. I don't even want it anymore. That's correct. That's what a stimulant will do. Well, don't you find that doing crystal meth two or three times a day is non-productive anyway? Yeah, it is, but like... It's. I stopped. Do, I, I'm trying to stop. I. I got caught and everything. I. I'm in jam and everything. So, but um. You're in. You're in jail. Juvenile jam. Hall? Jam. It's like a drug program, I guess. I don't know. Oh. Okay. And you're you're that's using uh, in treatment. That's what they called it when they rammed that thing up Drew's ass uh, last week. Huh? Yeah. Uh, you're using in treatment. You're in treatment and you're still using drugs. Uh. Not. No. Not really. Well, like. Not really. You sound not like really. really. You, you sound ho- wasted yeah, right now. You better now. hope you're using drugs. Anyway, the great news about speed is it damages your brain, so you can add that into the symptoms you're going to have going forward. Wait a minute, Drew. That's not good news. Oh, uh, you missed your kiss. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, hey, uh, um, hey, Jack. Jack. Yeah. <clears throat> Look, you're 15 years old. Uh-huh. That's uh, very young. So you should get with that drug program, and you should focus on that, and forget about what your seriously. penis is doing. Yeah. And, uh, listen. Uh, Which one do you like better, crystal meth or sex? I'm in it. Oh. Uh, we should ask Jack. Well, Jack's for Definitely sex. He, he's a drug addict. Okay. Yeah. Jack, please. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, uh, everybody. Here, here's the whole thing. Um, you, when you're young, you're, you're just like a new car. You just drive the hell out of it. You don't have to change any fluids or oils or do any. You don't have to do anything. But uh, believe me, it time passes out. quickly, yes. and the wheels will come off the wagon, and, yes. and you'll do irreparable well, damage. But now that with these kids, they also they miss the development. Yeah, they, they actually don't develop you know, emotionally through the adolescence. The well, brain, the brain is stunted. I, 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 that's a, a very good point, which is, uh, and a, a lot of people, and as a society, we don't put a, um, a premium on the being knowing more than you did the year before. Oh, especially now, listen, the, the frontal lobes of the brain is where you're processing inter, you know, interpersonal things and social skills and coping and, and regulation of your emotional systems. Those areas don't grow if you're on drugs. All right. They stop growing. But I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to expand it just a little bit and yeah. say that no matter what your age is, you should know a little more than you did the year before. And then eventually mm. you get old and you just everything starts coming undone. But that's fine. <laughs> uh, we don't seem to put much of a premium on it. And, and whatever age you are, sort of the age you are, and mm-hmm. you sort of perpetually feel that age. And I think there's a lot of 15-year-olds that just feel like, well, I'm 15 and, you know, I'm done. My brain's done. I'm done. Uh, you smoke a lot of weed or do a lot of drugs starting at 15. You'll get to 40. You'll be 15. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You will not have... Uh, developed. consumed any yeah. of this this knowledge that uh, is out and about. Yeah. Yes, you won't have developed, mm-hmm. and it's it becomes exquisitely clear when you're forty and you're talking to one of these guys who's forty, but he's really fifteen. Oh yeah, and uh, and there's no, and it's hard to get a gig too. It's hard to get a job, so uh, please understand that. And it's hard to feel okay. They feel constantly deficient and unhappy. All right, because one one of the main functions of self is to be able to regulate your emotions. 
can't mm. do it. All right, uh, we can talk to Sam from uh, Salt Lake City, but that'd be three dudes in a row, and okay. I'm just tired of these guys uh, that are uh, too cool for school. They yeah. act like you called them up at home. Yeah, yeah what? Uh, shut up, you 15-year-old jack-offs. How dare you? <laughs> Calling us up and then pretending like we called you, and then you're so cool. There's nothing worse than a cool guy. Is there? I agree. It's too smooth. It's like they're all loose. They, they get, everything's like figured out. I know what's I going agree. on. Yeah, but you're getting turned on. You like those kind of guys, don't no, you? No, okay, I don't. Okay, good. Good. You like dorky guys who talk a lot, right? I like funny guys. Yeah. <laughs> funny dorky guys with nasally drones. You're in. Yeah. Uh, Keisha? Yeah? <clears throat> You're 15? Uh -oh. Yeah. All right. What's going on? Okay. Well, okay. I'm going on with this girl named Andrea, and we've been going out for about yeah. a year. And we, gonna, we don't get bogus from chicks too much, but when you start off with the name... It what? feels bogus. No, no, no. Liar, no. liar, whore, no. liar, whore, you know it. Keisha's a girl, right? Keisha's yeah. a girl. Going out with Andrea. Keep going. Okay, well, um, we've been uh, going out for about a year, and it's... Sounds like she's laughing. Yeah, I'm it was a worrisome laughing. pause. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I want to tell my mom, and, like, my mom's Why? homophobic. Why would you want to tell your mom? Like, I just feel weird. And, like, Andrew's parents know. My girlfriend's parents know. And it's... And like, how do they react to this? They really didn't care, because um, they're really... Um, they're just... Um, I don't know. They're, they really don't have a problem with it or anything. But... What is, what is it that the, her parents know? They know what? that we're going out and stuff. And that we're gay. Whatever, how, lesbian. Yeah, how old is your girlfriend? Fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah. S says here your dad's in jail. Yeah. Why is he in jail? He's in jail because um, attempted murder, for about um, like uh, kidnapping my mom, I guess. Mm hmm. Yeah, he's kind of like um. I, I kind of think that I'm a lesbian because of my dad, because he used to beat me when I was a little kid. Oh yeah, that happens. That happens. Yeah. Like that. All right. And well, listen, what? yeah, Keisha. Yeah. Oh. Uh, okay, you, you realize I'm a genius, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so then it's just listen to everything I tell you, would you please? Yeah. Okay, that, I mean, that's after all, that's why you called, right? Yeah. You, want, it, you want an audience with the, the, the genius, and now I'm going <laughs> to impart my knowledge to you, but you have to do what I tell you to do. Okay. All right, you're you're 15. You're a mess. You, I, your dad's in jail for trying to kill your mom. You're, you're your a mom, trauma survivor. Your mom is the kind of woman who'd be attracted to a guy like this. This is a, a cluster F yeah. to the uh, tenth degree. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now you're you're acting out as you should. I mean, this is what happens. Um, you telling your mom how you are is r just an attempt to to get her back for what she's put you through. That's right. That's exactly what that is. That's the only reason you need to tell her anything. A 15-year-old's impulse is to hide everything from mom. You shouldn't tell them anything. Well, y that's your impulse. Anyway, yeah, you should tell them, but, you, but your impulse is to tell them nothing. When you have to tell her something, it's for an effect. Right. So that Im now, what your impulse should be to get some therapy, well, some counseling. You, could it be possible that she just wants to be comfortable at home? No, There's no, no because, possible, uh, because she if knows she's comfortable at her girlfriend's knows, parents' house. No, she knows if she tells the homophobic mom, there will be hell to be paid. It will erupt into total chaos. It's not going to be comfortable. You can't change who the mom is, but that's what she wants. She wants that kid. Well, maybe she wants to be honest with her mom. No, no, no. no. Hmm. No, it's not, look, 90% of honesty from uh, people under 30 is just BS. It's yes. just them just uh, foisting their crap on yes. other people. Like when these uh, a-holes make these announcements of, hey, I'm straightforward, I'm honest, I look in the eye, I tell you what I think, and uh, hey, if you can't handle that, that's your problem. No, you're an a-hole, that's what it is. And Keisha over here is paying back her mom for the horrible life for that the she's trauma. created yeah. for her. Yeah. And your your mother is uh, homophobic. She she would go through the roof if she found out about it. You know this. it's going to hurt mom, gonna and so you're going to do that. Yeah. Right. You want to hurt now, mom. Now, meanwhile, all you do is make life horrible for yourself. Right. The reality is you... If you had you're a, living if, with this yeah, woman. If yeah, if you were looking out for yourself, you'd, you'd fly low because you know she's homophobic, and why put yourself through that misery? It's not going to change her. It's going to make her worse. Well, you guys should do a show because you guys we're are really good. You're quick. We're thinking about getting a radio kit going. <laughs> a what? Hey, Keisha? Yeah. All right, so look, baby doll, there's, uh, there's, there's time for you, but he, okay, here's the deal. 
you uh, it, it's as if you have some cancer because of your uh, horrible childhood and uh, if you want to ignore it it's going to kill you right. you have to get some chemo you got to get some you have some to go treatment. in and get some treatment your trauma survivor how about you get some treatment for this not to change your sexual orientation, but to right. But it, it, we're most concerned by the impulse to tell mom. Yeah, we don't care about the lesbian yeah. stuff. As a matter of fact, we're glad. Yeah, yeah. It just means you're not going to crap out a bunch of crappy kids and screw I, them up with some biker. I go to a therapist a lot. Um, good. Like, right, good, good. What does your therapist say about you telling your mom? He says, well, he tells me to do it. Like I'm just kind of scared to though. Like I want good. to, but I'm scared. Don't tell her. Why do you want to tell your mom? Uh, I don't know. Just because. It's like, I guess you guys kind of right because I guess it would make me feel a bit better. Yeah, but it's yeah. going to make things worse. That's yeah. the reality. It, it it make you feel better, just like uh, you know. Why don't you just whack her over the head with a bar stool? That make you feel better. To make you feel better too. Yeah, me, it, me and my therapist talk about like, um, me being lesbian and stuff because um I need to talk about that a lot because I feel really screwed up just in so many ways because I have ADHD, ODD, OCD, anxiety disorder, depression, uh, and I'm a black <laughs> Jewish lesbian. So you buy? Oh, really? Yeah. Black Jew Jewish? Yeah. This part's not, this part's, now it's, this is not, lesbian, fine, black, fine, because now this is all fit in the but prison. Mom, the is, thing, mom you know? maybe is the, is the... Who's the Jew, not dad? Mom. Yeah. Mom? Yeah. Yeah, they don't allow Jews in prison. <laughs> like a special war. The uh, Beth Hillel ward. <laughs> <They don't, laughs> there's no Jews in prison. <laughs> you know, there's no atheists in foxholes. There's no Jews in prison. <laughs> All right. Uh, Keisha, a, stay with the therapy. Keisha, that's yeah. Good. And, and look, and, and listen, no one gives a rat's ass what you are. Yeah, it's whatever and you don't, are. Don't fine. start getting into it. And, and don't, I know you're mad and you want to lash out against society and everyone in it. Don't start getting into that. Well, I'm black. I'm a lesbian. I'm Jewish. So everybody's. No, no, listen. Listen, everybody. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. They really and Everybody's don't. too and, into their own ass. And look, I'm not saying that people aren't whatever, racist or sexist or, or, or whatever. They are. They are. But you know what? Not enough to act on it. That's the thing that everyone's got to understand. Yes. People don't like other cultures, oftentimes. People don't like other religions, oftentimes. People are sexist, homophobic. They're all these things. But here's the reality is, you less never, you than never one know tenth it. of one percent will ever act yeah, on you never know it. That's they're... the part that screws your argument yeah. up. Yeah, there's a bunch of guys, a bunch of white guys walking around that are angry, that are angry about the gays, that are angry about the Jews, that are angry about the black. Yeah, but they never do anything. So it shouldn't affect you. Just move forward. Stop pretending. And by the way, if you don't get the job, it's because you're angry and uh, a victim of abuse. That's that's what's freaking your potential employer out. Not the not the Jewish mm -hmm. lesbian thing. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll take a quick break. Angie, ever heard over here? Who Should we go with? for a pee? Let's go for a pee. <laughs> I'm gonna be sitting down though in solidarity. <laughs> uh, we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hello. Who's this? Uh, this is Love Line. 1-800-LOVE-191. Love Line will be right back. Hey, everybody. It's Love Line. I'm uh, Adam. That's Dr. True. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Angie Everhart is here tonight from Celebrity Mall. Good evening. Coming up this Wednesday at uh, on uh, ABC. I'm going to tell you to start watching at 8. Play it safe. Yeah, well, it's seven thirty. Uh, no, eight a.m. Oh, okay, I mean a.m. Yeah. yeah, on ABC. Yeah, you get a good eight a.m. Good thirty. <laughs> Just make sure you're on ABC the entire. Just keep it on ABC. Yeah. Just watch yeah, ABC uh, all day long. Might and come on at eight. <laughs> might come on at nine. But you just watch and don't worry. Get there early because uh, you want to get you want to get your place in line. You know what I mean? A lot yeah. of people are going to be watching that show. Jeremy McGrath is uh, coming in here uh, tomorrow night, who we're just uh, speaking of uh, earlier in the show, and he's doing something with uh, Speed Vision, who's uh, coming on, or Speed Channel. They change it from Speed Vision to Speed Channel. So he's going to come in here tomorrow and talk about uh, that. I'm guessing something to do with motocross. And uh, I'm going to give a stern t uh, talking to with the uh, Speed Vision tards over there with all this NASCAR crap they oh, do. Yeah. Oh, I tell you... Uh, I'm not going to get into it, but uh, they used to run all sorts of cool stuff, and uh, it's become all NASCAR stuff, and uh, this is the form of racing for retards, everybody. Stop 
playing to this audience. A lot audience. of people like it, though. A lot of idiots like it. But it's a huge NASCAR? audience. NASCAR? Yes, but listen, here's the thing about idiots. A lot of people We like need it. to steer them, much like you steer the NASCAR. We need to take all the tards that are really into NASCAR and point them in the right direction toward other forms of, of, of motor racing. You understand? Yes, people, you can make this argument for everything. Yeah, oh, people like, people like uh, uh, Why don't you Carolina. like NASCAR? It's, it's just because it's a one the, turn? The, the, the cars suck. I don't like the cars. There's nothing good about it. Like, half of the motor racing is the cars. And the NASCARs, they just suck. There's old push rod V8, iron block V8. So who cares? And they just go in a circle. It's, not, it, it's just no good. It's no fun to watch. I know they're trading paint, getting in accidents and all that. But it's just, it's just hillbilly entertainment to me. I, I just I, I want to see Call some me sports a hillbilly. cars. Call me a hillbilly. you like that, too? <laughs> Brendan? Bre- Brendan? Yeah, hey, what's up? You're 17? Yeah. What's up? Uh, I just wanted to ask Angie, did you work with uh, Dennis Rodman on that Celebrity Mole? I sure did. He's coming up here, by the way. What was that like? Yeah, what was that like? Dennis was pretty surprising. He, I expected him to be a lot crazier than he was. He definitely told some interesting stories. Yeah, that's what I was always wondering and if it was kind of just a front or if he really was crazy like that. Oh, no, he's, he's crazy. crazy like that. <laughs> he just was behaving himself for the cameras. Yeah. yeah. No, he wasn't. He just was on good behavior this these that two week, weeks. Yeah. It just happened to be that he was hmm. nice these two weeks. Did he get drunk and do anything mm, stupid? No, that's no. I think that's why he was sober. Oh, all right. Oh, and Adam, I just want to tell you, I uh, I just saw that Family Guy where he did the voiceover. It's hilarious. Oh, uh, which is one? It Voice of Death. Yeah, uh, yeah, the Death one. It's great. Uh, when okay. uh, he wished that uh, Dad were still dead. Yeah, exa- exactly. <laughs> Thanks, Brendan. And, uh, Drew, I'm looking forward to reading your book, man. Thanks, Brendan. Wow. Right. Look at that. Nice. Man's kissing all the way around. That's good. Angie fan, Adam fan, and Drew fan. I tell you, this is the new Mott Squad right here. <laughs> I'm the black guy. I'm Link. Yeah? Yeah. I'll take this on the road. We could hang. My boy's charm. I'll hang out with Angie's, you guys. Uh, tomboy. <laughs> tomboy attitude mixed with the supermodel like, good luck. We all like cars. Yeah, we all like cars. Yes. Uh, yeah. All right, let's keep uh, let's keep rolling forward. And I speak prefer to, not uh, to crash them. But. And each other's food yeah. and like in each other's refrigerators and in each other's bed and. Liz. Yes. <laughs> what was that all about? Ooh. Speaking to. Sorry, I was explaining to my fiance uh, why I was calling. <laughs> oh, all right. You're 25. I was wondering why I was calling Loveline. <laughs> well, you can tell I was us. Explaining that it wasn't because of a sexual problem. And what is Good. it? What is it? <laughs> Well, I was just calling because earlier you got you guys were talking about how girls don't appreciate poop humor, and I was just going to let you know that there are plenty of women in the world that do find <laughs> poop very funny. Yeah, nine women uh, on the What's that? Planet. You and eight other women. There's Me a total and eight of nine other that... women. Well, I know one other because I live in a ho- in a household with one other woman and two two other guys, mm-hmm. and we have a running joke in our house that. We um, we have kind of over a couple years started collecting fake poop, and it started as a running joke that we hide it in uh, in various places around the house for people to find. That's not poop home humor. That's novelty humor. Yeah, that's not specifically poop yeah. humor. Even though you're that's, using well, the poop, that's, that's like saying. That, hold on a second. That's like saying I'm into farts. I like whoopee cushion. Whoopee cushion. cushion. Yeah, exactly. That's not the same thing. No, it's different. No, not a pure. No, because that's not real at all. There's no it's odor not, involved. There's it's not no the fart. It, it's it's just embarrassing. I don't even like surprise, the lack of poop. Novelty. Yeah, that's not my thing. Yeah, I'll tell you what was funny though. My my wife was uh, uh, beating my behind the other night. <laughs> and I beg your pardon. <laughs> I was just, I was just uh, lying on the sofa wearing the sweatpants, and she was just sort of smacking my ass. Oh, and you farted repetitively, on her. Yeah, and you uh, I blasted one off. Oh, it was good. <laughs> Did you do it on purpose? Oh hell yes! And I bet she laughed though, and she was no, like, oh. no. she, she got angry. Well, she gets angry, of course. She had to because she'd been beating my behind. But it's always, always funny if so you, you can farted on her hand. Well, in her face. Be fair. No, no. But you, 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 you got to smack someone in the behind. You, 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 know, you got some trouble. You punch somebody. They might defend themselves. That's right. It's no different. And though, yes, you felt gleeful afterwards. Nothing better. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nothing better than uh, answering a question with a fart. That's always uh, <laughs> that's did always she, the well, funniest did, one. Did she keep hitting, hitting you, or did she back off at no, that she, point? Yeah, she, she really did. She ran. Ran. <laughs> and then she left the room. Of course. Uh, I, I, one of the most. Uh, she left the room, right? 
Yeah, she just started yelling. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 one of the, the 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 greatest moments of my life, and it sounds like nothing, but it really <laughs> it, it really meant a lot to me. Is when I said to uh, Bobcat. No, no. Well, when that I was the when I farted moment. in the coffee can and Jimmy sniffed it, that was the greatest Ew. moment, the <laughs> proudest moment of my life. I mean, I haven't had children yet, but I have been married. I can tell you, it was much better in the marriage. You know, guys do that. They feel like I kiss yeah. a little ass. They go, well, winning the uh, national championship. That I mean, second to marriage because their wife's always around. Second to getting married, and uh, and of course my three children. This is the greatest. They have to say that. And of course, that's not the, not the truth, though. The marriage is uh, it's like pulling teeth for guys. No guy cares about their marriage. But here, here's the thing. Yeah, blowing that uh, fart in that coffee can that uh, Jimmy then inhaled. Buried is, uh, his hand. Absolutely yeah. the greatest, greatest moment of my life. Yeah. But uh, what was I talking about? Some other with, Dan, with the Bobcat. Oh, oh, when I said the Bobcat, Bob and I were just alone in uh, our office once over at the man show. And I said, Bob, is it, is it true that you can fart whenever you want? <laughs> And, and there's a beat, and, there's a, and all I heard is, I thought, wow, that's, that's the best answer you could have. I would have accepted yes. Like, he really could have just said, yeah, I, I, I can. But the fart, it, m- never should have been more definitive answer. And the ultimate punctuation. That's it. No exclamation more point. Done. Never asked again. He didn't have to open his mouth. No didn't, words. Didn't have fart humor is different, though. Farts, fart humor is funny. Yeah, that is funny. Yeah, that was. You like uh, it? Oh, you, you don't like, like the fart poo. humor. You, you don't like the poo. Poo humor no. is a little less. Yeah. Well, I'd, I'd go hold Liz's guy. I was curious if she had brothers. That no. would sort of make it. Uh, but listen, the uh, the lacquer doggy doo doo novelty doo doo. That's not. Not, yeah. not good for us either. No. No, thank you. Sam? Yes. You're 17? Yes. You uh, just got your penis pierced? No, I actually got it done this summer. Uh huh. Yeah. All right. Um, okay, well, I was got out of wrestling today and mm-hmm. shutting down and my wrestling coach saw my piercing and he came up to me and like confronted me about it and was just talking to me about it and um then he brought up the question about me being sterile for some odd reason and i never thought about that before i got it and bogus so i called what are you talking about sterile what are you talking about like how, how would how would a, a piercing prevent you from producing sperm? Like, would it at all, like, if, if an infection occurred, would it, like, cause the sperm to be altered at all? If they had to cut your penis off, You'd have maybe. trouble delivering the sperm, yes. Then you'd have trouble delivering, no, but it would not change the sperm. Fine. But uh, the idea of wrestling with a uh, penis piercing sounds... How did he like see the piercing? dancing with the devil. Your coach saw the piercing? How did yeah. that happen? Like, I, just getting out of the shower, he just came into the locker room. Mm, no. Nah. Really? The coach is walking around the shower. And while you're nude, he comes up and goes, hey, you're hey, going to be uh, sterile from that? What does he mean, sterile? Sam, like, talk about your dork for a moment. <laughs> no, no, he's just, like, he was just in there um, fixing the scale. All right. I believe him now. Yeah. Okay, so Sam, what weight division do you uh, wrestle in? I wrestle in? 189. 189? Wow. Yeah. And, uh... What is it about wrestling, by the way? I, you know, these guys are just constantly losing weight. They're like spitting in a cup and sweating. I, I, I know. Sounds like a few models. I know. <laughs> you want to, you want to you wanna wrestle a, as, in the lighter division as possible. But at a certain point, aren't you weaker? Yeah, guys who cut a lot of weight don't have a lot of energy. So. Yeah, yeah. It's just uh, get get to the one, get to the one you're you're most comfortable in. All right, listen, Sam. Uh, take you take the piercing out before you get on the mat. Oh uh, no, I tape it. What kind of piercing is it? Um, it's a buccal piercing. It's right underneath the head. It's like a 14 gauge. Buccal cross. Uh, yeah, like uh, right underneath. It's not uh, through. It's underneath. Yeah. The head. All right. Well, it's nothing to do with sterility. It can affect erectile function. It can get infected. Yeah. It can tear. All kinds of things can happen. You wear but a cup when you wrestle. No, I just put some gauze around it and some tape so it oh, doesn't okay. catch on anything. How about just breaking down and getting a cup though? It don't rest. The wrestlers use cups. You never no. see them with the cups. I'm uh, I'm shocked and appalled after uh, ten years of uh, playing uh, organized football and having the cup being the uh, centerpiece of my uniform. I mean, <laughs> I played seven years of pop Warner football. They made you knock on your cup. Yeah, like you you would do a whole you do a whole cup you would do a whole breakdown. Like yeah. the refs would line everyone up, like thigh pads, everyone thump 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 thump, yep. shoulder pads, cup. You'd hear <laughs> knocking, knock knock yeah. knock. I'm knock, gonna knock. do that at the lingerie bowl. <laughs> you knock on that cup. You had yes, to wear a yeah. cup. You know, show a ritual where they start out the lingerie bowl that way. Yeah, you shoulders, thighs, I'm, cup. I'm amazed. Go. You know, you talk to uh, pro 
pro uh, NFL players. Nah, I'm not wearing a cup. What? No. Nope. They don't wear a cup, and uh, then you talk to like these uh, super cross racers and wrestlers. And stuff. No one wears a cup anymore. What? Yeah, wear the cup, fellas. Take Maybe we had to really work minutes. on that technology a bit too. Make something some of the little flex. flex. Yeah, I, I I could see the hard cup not yeah. working well with the wrestling, but uh, certainly so you got to do something. Put a little shoe leather in there or something. Anyway, uh, the, the people are very confused about. Uh, <laughs> yes, they are. Okay. The sterility. This guy, uh, he's calling from Salt Lake City, by the way, with the big big uh, penis piercing. Yeah. Doesn't seem like big a great barbell through his penis. Nice. Angie Everhart is in uh, studio tonight. We'll uh, take ourselves a quick break. We'll be right back. Dude, you got issues. Call Love Line. 1-800-LOVE-191. Love line, everybody. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Jeremy McGrath in here tomorrow night. And uh, Angie Everhart in here tonight. We're going to try to wrangle some of those uh, Super Bowl and motocross tickets from uh, Jeremy. That's, uh, that's a big night for me. Hmm. Go out to Anaheim. Jesse James is going to be at the Super Bowl doing something. I think he's driving Janet Jackson in. He was also in the race with us. Huh. That's right. Monster uh, Garage. We're, uh, yeah. Drew, maybe you go over that with me. Huh? You have a couple I of beers. Am. Doesn't that sound that beers. exciting to me? Couple of beers. Oh, my kids might want to go. Yeah, Why don't yeah. you come to the lingerie bowl? You come to the lingerie bowl. Mm. That's at the Coliseum. Mm-hmm. So there's gonna be a, there's gonna be yeah. an audience for that. It's live. We're gonna do it live. Wow. Come on, bring as many. I get. I have unlimited tickets. What is? Uh, bring well, all yeah, of your beer Colise- drinking friends. Coliseum holds like 110,000 people. <laughs> oh, that's gonna be crazy. Mm-hmm. Oh, and, and how much is the pay per view? By the way. That's a good question. Yeah. You don't have the answer. I don't to. have the answer. You know, I always feel bad. I always feel bad for uh, the super cheap pay per view. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, if you look on the pay per view thing, you'll see like uh, De La Hoya's fighting. It's forty nine ninety five. I think and, ours is like a thirty five dollar yeah. ticket. I'm not positive. Once, uh, once in a while, you see the pay per view. It's 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 like uh, Beach Boys in concert three ninety nine. Yeah. <laughs> like uh, the Fourth of July concert from uh, Pismo Beach. And just uh, it, there's a couple of sad pay per views in there. Some sort of bizarre backyard wrestling championship or something like that. Drew, keep track of those. You know, I've done a lot of publicity and nobody's asked me that question. Not How much? One person has. Asked I'm hearing me about that. twenty bucks. They're not. They're not doing their job. I'm seeing uh, nineteen ninety five. That's fair. Because uh, because uh, there will be some spanking going on. I mean, at home. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sorry to say. You stay away from that clam dip after <laughs> at the Super Bowl party when the guy's done. Because it's going to be a disaster. <laughs> oh. Oh. Then, no, that will happen. That is. But here's the thing. More than 20 bucks, guys, uh, they, they buy porn. Yeah. Because you can get a DVD for more than 20 That's the whole thing. I see. They got to price it right. Spanker's price. <laughs> Spanker's range. <laughs> right. And after that, Spanker's lament. I'm sending this tape to my mother. <laughs> there will be there will be a jack uh, a a bowl of sorts <laughs> going on. <laughs> Super Bowl of beating off going on at home. Oh, believe you me. This is what guys do. All right, you ready to move forward here, Drew? No, I cannot move forward. No, we have to. I'm paralyzed by that thought. Christy? Yeah. You're 17? Yeah. What's up? I mean, before my boyfriend, I used to think it was cool, you know, he used to watch porn and, like, to get himself, you know, started. And now it's, like, without porn, he'd rather, like, not have sex and he'd rather watch porn. How but old is he? He's 18. Does he do drugs? Um, well, I don't, like, he used to do weed and I think he wanted to, like, rehab for a couple of months. Yeah. And because I, and I'm like, he would never tell me what else he did, but I'm pretty sure he was into, I think he was into coke for a while. I suspect he's doing something again. Oh, look, the idea of an 18-year-old guy having to kickstart his yeah, penis. That's, what, that's what's leading me to believe he's on. Yeah, awesome. I got to get a little porn. I got to prime the pump. Are yeah. you kidding? You should just randomly have a boner at 18. Continuously. Wherever you are. Yeah. Like, if, if I just randomly just did, did a boner check on you four times a day for uh, for a year. You, three you, out of four. You, you, three out of the four, you yeah. should have a boner. Yeah. That's what, yeah. that's what you do at 18. And I would if I was a guy. Like, yeah. Before he's like, like anywhere, you know, we would do it like anywhere, you know. And that was like he needs porn, and they're like, it's freaking me out. All right, now listen, everybody. Christy. What, uh, by the way, I, I smell trouble with Christy. Mm-hmm. You're going to get pregnant. Oh. You already have a kid? 
No, I don't. He's, what, are you, what are you using for birth control? Um, condoms, basically. That's just about it. Uh, you get that yeah, in the morning and after and pill Believe available. me, that's a catch as catch can. Yeah, get that morning after pill. If you have a mistake, take it. Yeah, I mean, he's been my only, you know, like, we just, we were dating, like, for about three years. Before. Is your dad a drug? Is your dad an alcoholic? No, my dad's a jackass, but... <laughs> yeah, well, you found one, a boyfriend that, that fulfilled that role for you. Yeah. Why is your dad a jackass? I mean, he's, like, he believes in, like material takes upon everything and he's a real asshole and mom and like he's hardly never home and like when he is home he just like screams and he used to beat me when i was smaller oh. all right so listen christy you, you listen to the show right yeah okay so uh, a we don't trust this guy b how about a little therapy for you c don't let him get you pregnant for christ's sake and uh, look you're 17 he's 18 you go out for a year it, this, these things are supposed to end why don't, you, why don't you go on the pill? Yeah, let him get on with his rehab, and you get on the pill, or get that morning after pill. You want to go Please. to Al-Anon. Go to Al-Anon. Get a sponsor. Yeah. Or Planned Parenthood and get the, get the pill. Mm -hmm. But just mm -hmm. be careful. What, well, you're 17. Are you senior in high school? Yeah, I am. What's the, what's the plan? Junior college? Well, actually, I'm applying, and I was, um, was going to apply to college, and I had been accepted to USC. But, like, right now, I'm not thinking about going to college. I'm thinking about taking a year break and working it's, for a while. This guy's screwing your life up. Yeah. And most people who say they're going to take a year break, they never end up going back to All college. Right. Don't That's take right. a year off. Go to college. That's Let this guy be. Go this to guy's college. a problem. I was a straight-A student. I was a scholar-athlete at a year. Took a break. And uh, 16, 15, what's the most, what was the most we can get? 1,500 on the SATs. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I was I was in all the clubs, and I took a year off, and uh, next thing you know, I'm cleaning carpets in North Hollywood. Nice. That's right. That's what happened, Drew. Well, part partly true, except for I failed driver's ed, and uh, driver's ed failed driver's ed. That's good. That's failed, weird. Failed driver's Mr. Deliberti. I find now, that strange since you. Since I've, I'm, I have proof that you're a good driver. <laughs> yeah. I ended up teaching traffic school later in life, too, which is uh, humorous. Uh, yeah, no, uh, that was Mr. Gregory, the uh, a-hole who can kiss my hairy ass. If he's not dead already. But, uh, no, Dilberti was the guy who failed me in uh, biology, which I deserved. You know, wasn't, wasn't, wasn't cut out for that stuff. Not, not a science man. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Steve, but listen, you uh, retards, you go home to your crappy little bunkers in Van Nuys and cry, cry yourself a river into your, uh, into your uh, wonton soup. <laughs> you drive your crappy little Mary. Let me just say this to all those teachers. Kiss my ass. I'm a millionaire. I'm laughing all the way to the bank. You guys are living off of a top ramen and uh, scrambled porn alone <laughs> in your crappy little bachelor apartments with your crappy little 40 grand a year. I laugh at you now. Ha! Yes, Drew? Would you like to laugh as well? No, I just enjoy your uh, glee <laughs> oh. at others' misery. Oh, I was just like an a-hole magnet when I was uh, from, from zero to like uh, 20. Just jack-offs all around me. It's a Gregory. He's a driver. Oh, oh, I got to go back. I got to build a time machine so I can go back and kill myself. <laughs> or kill them. That's my plan. I want to build a time machine. I want to go back and I'm going to kill myself. That's awful. No, no, that's my plan, though. That's awful. It's going to work. All right. And Drew. Yeah. But if I go back in time and kill myself, you're going to be sitting here with Ricky Rackman making 80 grand a year. You understand? I get it. Right. <laughs> you're going to be screwed, too. I'll Got come it. sit here with Angie, you. Angie, you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. All right, guys. Bottom line, here's the deal. Looking to hook up? Sick of wasting time with the wrong person? One call's all you need to make. Call the Dateline. The Dateline. 877-889-DATE. Loveline with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. 1-800-LOVE-191. We'll be right back. To show everybody, I want to thank uh, Angie Everhart for coming out here and uh, tell everybody to watch her. Well, I'll just tell you guys. Watch her <laughs> on Celebrity Bowl. 
uh, Wednesday night on ABC. You at, at 10. Turn, at 10 o'clock. <laughs> 10. 10 o'clock. 10. It's 10. They turn on the TV at 8. Yeah. See whatever. <laughs> yeah. 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 You watch that uh, Lopez show. George Lopez got himself a show. I watch that. And then uh, then pay-per-view, 1995. A pittance. To for spend the Super Bowl. for sure. the uh, Super Bowl uh, lingerie of uh, Super Bowl. So, uh, Super Bowl Adam, lingerie. before yeah. the show's over, yes. you know my normal guy I was telling you about? Yes. It's his birthday today. Happy birthday. Oh. Yeah. His name Thank Rick? You. Rick's a good <laughs> name Steve. for a normal guy. Steve? What's his name? I'm not telling you. Okay. Really? He's a normal guy. Like, anyone's going to know? So, oh, Dave. Ooh, Ooh. Dave over in accounting. <laughs> All right. So, until next time, it's Adam Kroll for Dr. Drew saying yeah. mahalo. Mahalo. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Anne Engold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.